Good morning everyone, I'm Josh, I'm one of the youth leaders at St Mary's and today I'm going to be taking us through Psalm 29. But before I do that, let me just pray. Lord, thank you for this chance we get to study your word, to read through it together and help us to learn from it and reveal to us the truth you want us to learn from it today. Amen. So, Psalm 29, I'm going to be reading from the NIV. If you want to follow along with me, feel free. Um, it's a great psalm, let's jump straight in. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert, the Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. What a great psalm. Well, what can we learn from this psalm? What can we take away from it? Well, I think the first thing um, to note about this psalm, and it might seem obvious, but it's just talking about God. The whole psalm is talking about how amazing God is. That's one of the first things I noticed when I looked at it. David, who was writing this psalm, he really does not hold back on any of the language. Now, if you just look at some of the words he uses it's big powerful punchy language glory strength splendor thunder lightning powerful majestic he's speaking just how unimaginably awesome god is and he's using his entire arsenal of vocabulary to do it and it is worth remembering that sometimes god isn't just a souped up santa in the sky he's the one who takes the whole universe and holds it in his hand. This is the God that we believe in. He is powerful beyond measure. And this psalm tells us how powerful God is by looking at just one aspect of God, one part of him, his voice. You may have noticed that the voice of the Lord is a phrase that crops up again and again and again throughout this passage. The first time it's used is in verse 3. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Well, hang on. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Okay, that's very nice and poetic, but how does that tell us about how powerful God is? Is it a mistake? Has David messed up here? No, no, he hasn't. He's chosen his words very carefully. See, right back at the start of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, verse, end of verse 2, it speaks, says the Spirit of the Lord is over the waters. And then God said, let there be light. See, when, when David says the voice of the Lord is over the waters, he's talking about creation. He's talking about God creating light creating the world, creating the entire universe. What better show of power could there possibly be? <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, he goes, he goes on throughout um, verses sort of three to nine, and he talks about just how powerful God's voice is. He gives us loads of great, very vivid images um, one he uses a couple of times is sort of snapping trees in two. I don't know if you've ever seen a opera singer shatter glass 
with their voice. It's kind of cool. But imagine doing that for an entire forest of trees. That's how powerful God's voice is. He goes even further, though. He talks about land itself, the earth. That's what David means when he's talking about Lebanon and Syria. And those are areas of land. Syrians are mountain, leaping up. At God's voice. It's an amazing passage, an amazing psalm. It just speaks of how big and strong and powerful God is. But that's not the end. And it's really important that that's not the end. See, the last two verses speak of a God who is on his throne. A God who is in control and a God who blesses and gives strength to his people. See, God being so unimaginably powerful is only a encouragement and a comfort if he's also in control. You wouldn't want to give Mr. Bean unimaginable power. Imagine how that would turn out. But this psalm tells us that God is in control. He is on his throne. And the rest of the Bible says the same. There is nothing in this world that is outside of God's rule. No matter what happens, God is in control. And as I just wrap up, let's look at the last verse. See, this psalm describes a God who gives strength. To his people, not just a God who has strength. The God we've been looking at in this psalm is the same God who walks with us every day. A God who is always with us when times get tough and will give us the strength we need through his awesome power. What a great encouragement that is. So thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day.